Well, hello everyone, Texie88 here and welcome to another review. And now I'm taking a look at Zool, Ninja of the, from the Nth Dimension for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, Zool started off as a, presumably what was a hopefully going to become a mascot for the Commodore Amiga. But it did actually uh, not quite work out that way, and it made it to other platforms, and including the Super Nintendo, like we're seeing here. So, it's allowing for the fact that the Super Nintendo has more than just the one fire button, or, or two if you're lucky, which was uh, which the Amiga was usually limited to at the time. Three different difficulty levels. Music can be either on or off. You can have um, you can have, you can have up to five continues. Not massively keen on the typeface they've used, I have to admit. So rather than having to press up to jump like you had to in the in the original Amiga version, you actually you actually press a jump button. And it's got the thing, you've got funky music tracks just like the Amiga version did, um, with plenty of uh, guitar samples. Lots of uh, product placement in the form of triple chops. Just like the Amiga version as well. Egg more. Now that now that, that thing that's flashing there, that's actually a checkpoint. Uh, the, the checkpoints look a bit different depending on the style of the world you're in, and and you, if you get that instead of going back to the beginning, if you die, you'll go back there. Your health is shown in the top middle of the screen, those three red bars. One thing I have to admit though, I'm really not that keen on the fact that they... I'm not keen on the fact that they've... Uh, yes, as I was saying, I'm... I'm not keen on the fact they've got, the, got these um, busy backgrounds. It's, some enemies are a bit hard to see against it. I mean, the original non-AGA version of Zool had to, uh, just had, uh, had um, a sort of rainbow effect style background instead. It may not, not have looked, looked, looked uh, as uh, visually stunning, but at least you could see what was going on. Oh god. See, I, I could barely see those spikes because they blended in too well with the background. I guess, I guess they uh, they thought this is a snare. We can't have we can't have it. Uh, we can't have have, have simplistic looking back in our uh, copper blade backgrounds. And you can do. A shield. Music's quite cool, I guess. I, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think the sound, sound samples are quite as crisp as they are in the Amiga version, which I did have. About how, which I did have as, uh, when I was younger. And balls. Okay, so I've reached the end of that stage. I suppose it's okay, but uh, the problem the problem is uh, it was a, this is a classic case of uh, why have cotton when you could have silk. So, see, that was bad design. I went straight into that enemy because of uh, because I couldn't see it in time to press it on top of it. And I'm running out of health. It yeah, what? Yeah. 
Do I'm running out of health. I really don't like the default controls. They sh I would have preferred it. I would have preferred it if they'd had the the B button for jump and uh, and something else for fire. Have, having B for fire and, to, and Y for jump it doesn't really work too well. Either. But oh God. but the biggest problem is that on the Super Nintendo. As I was saying, there was a classic case of why have cotton when you could have silk. It it had some absolutely classic Mario game uh, platformers, which were a lot, which were a lot more fun to play than this is. Whereas the Amiga didn't have Mario and Sonic due to licensing restrictions. Uh, Uh, the, the, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the two main consoles of the time, the, the Super Nintendo and the, which I'm, uh, whose version I'm looking at here, and and uh, its com main competitor, the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, if you're in the United States. Uh, they they unfortunately did, did have what else? Uh, and the collision detection pretty bad in this as well. They, they did have the likes of Mario and Sonic, and they were far more fun to play than this is, and uh, and had just had more to them, and was, were generally slicker. So, that coupled with the fact that, so unlike the twenty four ninety nine that uh, Amiga owners would have paid for, you know, for, 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 for Zool, Super Nintendo players would have, uh, would have paid a, about £40 plus for the... Uh, for, uh, for this, so it costing nearly, it's costing almost twice as much, and they were getting a, they're getting a game like that, especially as as a lot of the earlier Super Nintendos came with Super Mario World as standard. This this is a pretty bad port, really. And then, yeah, it's, it's not it's not that great, really. I'm, see, look, I didn't touch that. I know it's got some long spikes, but it's not that long. There's still, still a noticeable gap between me and it. It seems like it seems like with Zool, they tried to mix the best parts of, of Mario's platforming action with Zool's speed, but I don't think it's worked all that well. I don't understand why it's playing the same, uh, same, same tune. In the uh, the Amiga original had has had several different tunes. They alternated between them. I mean, admittedly, yes, some uh, some are more enjoyable to listen to than others. But oh, blast! Yeah, it's not amazing. Even for its time, it's not particularly amazing. Oh, bloody hell. And you get nasty little surprises like enemies that suddenly appear and, uh, appear, appear before you've had a chance to even register that they exist. Uh, that they even there. Oh, God. And going up walls like that is a pain in the ass because you have to jump your way up. And that's incredibly error prone. Now on the Amiga, the, 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 there was a sequel to Zool called, Z called Zool 2, in which you could control either Zool or his girlfriend Zeus, and both had differing skills, and they, the biggest fix they did was making it so that you could just press up to climb up a, a wall. You, did, you didn't have to, to hop jump your way up like you have to in, the, in this original game, and it works so much more better. Exactly the most intuitive in the world. To, 
to do that spiraling attack is it while you're airborne. Really. You actually have to mash the L button. Oh, what? That didn't touch me. There was a slight gap between me and that wasp thing. Yeah. Nah, this, this isn't great. Oh, it, it's doubtful that any any console players would have got much enjoyment out of this when they had the likes of Mario and Sonic um, on there, or possibly already in their in their library, but perhaps the, the, the game that actually came with their console in the first place, as I explained. And it's yeah, even more so on the Super Nintendo when uh, when Super Mario All Stars uh, came out and, and gave you four games for the price of about about one. Oh god! Nah, this is this is this is pretty badly designed. Isn't it? Oh god, no! Now I'm going to end the review there. So that's Zoro Ninja of the Nth Dimension for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Rather average platformer, if the truth be told. It, it may have at least initially been considered a classic on the Amiga on which it first appeared, but on consoles there were just far better options uh, vying for your money, and that's if you didn't already have them already, as I explained. Graphics are nice and colourful, little bit muddy considering the Super Nintendo has a 256 colours uh, capability, on screen capability in game. And I really don't like the fact they got those fairly busy backgrounds, uh, they, it makes it a bit hard to see things. Um, sound effect where you got some okay-ish sound effects and some some music with some slightly muddy sound samples. I mean, those the I, I, the uh, the uh, the uh, electric guitar effects uh, don't, don't really have the same vibrancy that they do on the original Amiga version, which I played back in the day. Um, gameplay. You'll probably want. You'll, it's inevitable you want to change the default, uh, the default control settings because they they really don't work particularly well, and they're not quite as intuitive as you might think. And those backgrounds make it a bit hard to see what's going on at times, even with the parallax. The better idea would have been to simplify them so you could actually more clearly see what was going on. I know that the Super Nintendo probably couldn't have had nothing, but even though the, the parallax that you're seeing here looks visually impressive, if it obscures what you're trying to see on screen, then it becomes a problem. And as I explained, the hit detection is pretty iffy, and you really need decent. But it doesn't. It all the Zool Ninja of the Nth Dimension also doesn't really push the Super Nintendo to its limits. And when you've paid about forty to forty-five pounds for well, for just one just one game, when Amiga owners were probably going to get a, a a better, more playable version, which would, which didn't have the likes of Sonic and Mario to contend with, uh, it probably wasn't such a bitter pill for them to swallow compared to what it would be for a Super Nintendo user or even a Mega Drive slash Genesis user. So. Yeah, I'm going to give Zool for the Super Nintendo 5 out of 10. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that review. Catch you on another one soon. Texie88 out.